In honor of Black History Month, here's a highlight of events that took place in BCPS. Today, Emerson Heights Elementary School is celebrating Black History Month. Everybody in our school was assigned a historically black college or university, and they all had to do research on their school. There was a door decorating contest, and then today they are presenting what they learned about their HBCU. I spoke a part in the assembly in my class. We had Hampton University, and I spoke about how Hampton University is the best school because we were kind of doing the contest against the other schools. The purpose of today is to make sure that our students understand their culture, their heritage, and we wanted to just push the initiative to um, give that idea for students to attend a HBCU. We've been doing this now for a few years. Miss Lundy, a first grade teacher here at Edmondson Heights, started it, and it's just an amazing event to celebrate Black History Month for the month of February, um, to celebrate the culture of many of our students, and just to honor that culture and history. And I like the whole event because I like that each class got to share their feelings and they got to express how they liked this, each school and how each class did something different. I can be a doctor. I think the children absolutely love it. It's a great opportunity to show off their talents, to show off how much they're able to collaborate together, to really talk about history and talk about what's really important and meaningful to them. I feel happy when I went on the stage because like my mom and dad was there and they was watching me. I felt good because I knew that we could, our class could have a time to shine. My name is Abigail Ad. My name is Mira Holly and I was born on January 30th. My name is Phyllis Wheatley and I was born in 1753 in West Africa. Today is the culminating event of the Hidden Figures Living Wax Museum of which the fifth graders had to research one hidden figure throughout the second unit of their ELA block. Today I am John Paul Jones, a military officer, a sea captain and also a military leader. Although he's a white man, he's also a hidden figure because mainly hidden figures are African Americans, but there are some white people like John Paul Jones himself that are white but also a hidden figure. Up until now, everyone feels that blacks in America were only slaves at that time, and to know that they did more than just work in a field or what have you, that they actually fought and died for the Amer for our country to be formed, and also women because the the, the mindset is that a woman just stayed home and took care of children. But there were women that were actually spies and actually disguised themselves as men to become soldiers in the fight for freedom. I was representing Ann Bailey. She was a very brave woman in the war. She was a frontiersman when her husband died. Her first husband, when he died, she decided to dress like a frontiersman and put her son in the neighbor's care. First in the class I researched her, you know, researched to see who she is. I wrote information down on a piece of paper. Then I got flashcards to help me like practice. I brought it at home so I can practice, make sure I know it by heart, so that next time when I perform to other people in the hallway, I know what to do, I know how to say it, everything like that. Since the people we're doing today are hidden figures, I think that every that the school and everybody else should learn about people that nobody really knows. June 16, 1738. She, her brother owned a printing business and eventually she took over the printing business as if she was like manager or even co owner. I see a sense of pride in my students that they're learning that someone that looks like them actually did something than just 
become, be a slave because all they knew was people were, we come from slavery. So they take ownership of their person. They are proud. And when we started reading and their, their name came up, they were like, that's my person. So they're learning their history and so are the younger students. They're also learning their history um, other than just what's been fed to them beforehand. When you think about the revolutions, mostly everybody always thinks like John Adams or Abraham Lincoln or J Thomas Jefferson. But it's good to learn about the people that weren't as famous as they were so that you know who else made the stuff. Like one of the people made the Declaration of Independence, another person made the flag, you know, different people. And I'm, I'm pretty, I think it's very important for all of us to learn and have this event about different people that aren't as famous as other people. Each year, BCPS celebrates Black History Month in a variety of ways to honor the achievements of black Americans and the key roles they've played in U.S. history. At Gunpowder Elementary School, these messages were heard through songs and poems. It's important to have Black History Month because we celebrate people that help change our world. Ruby Bridges was born in Tyler Town, Mississippi on September 8, 1954. Our whole grade talked about Ruby Bridges because she was the first African American girl to go to an all white school because she passed a really hard test and it was meant to be hard to um, prove that like white people were better than black people. One of the highlights during the assembly was about George Washington Carver. So George Washington Carver, um, farmers um, grew um, cotton and, um, and, and he found out that cotton t took nutrients out of the soil and so, um, he, and so he suggested the farmers to um, switch to peanuts and sweet potatoes and then switch back to cotton so it would go back and forth. What a great way to celebrate and educate our students during Black History Month. The best part of me is my heart. The best part of me is my heart because it allows me to have emotion and feelings towards people. So we wanted to do something different this year for Black History Month and the committee got together and we had read the story The Best Part of Me and we found that it would be a great way to connect famous African Americans and their best attribute to the students and the teachers in the building. The best part of me, I chose my face because it has most of my senses that I need like taste, hear, sight, and smell so that I can live and be safe. And then we asked students to focus on their best physical attribute to show what makes us different, unique, and special physically on the outside. The best part of me are my freckles. I like them because they make me look beautiful. The project was a success as students and staff participated in this year's theme, The Best Part of Me. They created a hallway full of photos and messages describing the best part of me. The best part of me is my legs because they help me run fast and I'm an athlete. And Michael Jordan was a famous basketball player and his best part of him was his feet and his legs to help him run fast and play basketball. Wilma Rudolph was a famous athlete runner and she won medals and her best part was her knees and legs. We learned about African Americans and what was the best part of them and that made me really inspired and I love doing the project because um, we were learning about new people and we got to express ourselves throughout it as well. We wanted the kids to be able to see that these heroes that they've seen before or heard about um, are proud of their talents, they're proud of what they look like, they're proud of their accomplishments and they could see themselves in these heroes and know that they could be proud of themselves too and grow up to be just like them.